So why learn small talk? One thing is that the words that you use often help you determine what you're going to be thinking. And Dijkstra put this, the tools that we are trying to use and the language or notation that we are using to express or record our thoughts are the major factors determining what we can think or express at all. So Dijkstra was arguing for expressiveness in our programming languages. And so learning new languages will help us uh, in this expressiveness. Small talk has been very influential. A uh, recent book of 2009 says that small talk is a pure object-oriented language and although it never actually made it to the mainstream, it influenced language evolution in many ways. Small talk originated in the 70s and for purposes of understanding how it might relate to commonly understood languages today, I think it's important to realize that operating systems were much closer to the languages uh, 30 years ago or 40 years ago. At that time, your operating system was, or the language was the operating system. And um, so the tie was much closer. Alan Kay, Dan Ingalls, and others at the Palo Alto Research Center developed small talk. Alan Kay coined the term object-oriented and modeled it on biology, where the goal was to have thousands of tiny computers that were interacting in well-defined ways. Small talk is what introduced Steve Jobs to the graphical user interface. Now, one of the areas of small talk that's confusing to people is that it's not a file-based development. And so characteristics of the file-based development, the schema and code is stored in text files external to the system. You have a separate compiler that generates a separate executable or an interpreter. And the per data is external to the system for persistence there may be an integrated development environment that ties these pieces together. Rather than comparing Smalltalk to the file-based development environment, I find comparisons to other things are maybe a bit more helpful to people. A database management system, so SQL, um, SQL Server from Microsoft, or Oracle or other uh, systems where the schema and code is internal, part of the data. There's tools available to manipulate it, but you're dealing with a live system where the changes you make are immediately implemented and you're making incremental changes to move from one system to another. Spreadsheets are, I think, an interesting comparison where you have a single tool where you have the code, the data, editors, and execution. If you save a spreadsheet, then the modifications you've made are preserved. You interact with it, get immediate feedback. You enter a formula into a spreadsheet and see what happened. Incremental changes take the system from one state to another and you start out with a blank spreadsheet, but it still has certain base functionality built in. Another analogy is our own personal computers, where the computer, you make modifications from inside the environment, you have persistent state that is saved when you shut down and restart the computer. We now have virtual machines, Parallels, VMware, Zen, and others, where you have a complete self-contained environment. So with Smalltalk and the image-based development, the object represents the combination of behavior and properties, code and data. The object space, we sometimes think, say, the image, but I'd prefer to use the image 
as a description for the disk, the, where things are saved when it's not in use. The object space is where we interact with the objects in RAM. All-inclusive environment where you modify an existing system and the environment contains your tools. Everything is an object, simple, elegant language, powerful class libraries. 